All right? Could you be a dispenser of his affairs? No matter how you may try, that is why you know there is no compulsion in religion. Because you cannot, you cannot take a person nafs and, and, and like how you take a, a, a piece of, of rag and polish the car, you can't take up a person nafs and help him polish you. You can't do that. You can encourage, you can impress upon them, you can tell them about consequences, you can tell them about rewards. But you cannot make a person. That is why the Quran says, "La tazero wa zedatan wizrawukra." No burden soul can bear the burden of another. I have to return to my Lord. How do I want to return? With a nice, beautiful, polished, shining room, or with a stained one because of the black smokes that came out of the working of my body? I have to decide that. Do you think that most of them listen and understand? Hear what I'm going to tell you now. Eh? Allah says, some people are like cattle. They are even worse. Chapter 25, verse 43 and 44. My humble understanding. You know, sometimes the cattle is more beneficial to human beings than other human beings. Because we get milk from it. We enjoy the flesh. We can ride some of them. But when you look at some human beings, what benefit can you get from them? So that is why Allah says, sometimes the cattle is better than the human being. It is for the person to decide, how do I want to, to live in this world? Do I want to be a beneficial, beautiful person? Or do I want to be just another one? To be part of statistics and that's all. That decision will rest with me. I have said this over and over. And a lot of people never thought about this before. Ma in the kum yang fad, ma in the Allahi ba. Whatever is with you of material matters will one day evaporate. And whatever you said before in your account over there will endure. Take note of that. A lot of people don't understand. They believe. Oh, look like Pharaoh. Ana Rabbu kumul Allah. I am your Lord the greatest because look at my material assets. Look how much I have. He never sent anything before for safekeeping. And one day he will regret it. That is important. We see that health, wealth, power, position, and material status, they are all just for a time. Today you might be strong and healthy. It may take one second for a cell to misbehave in your body. And that could be a different kettle of fish, as we say in Trinidad expression. Why? Because the misbehavior of a cell can lead to cancer. And you know all can, that can happen afterwards. All these will come to an end. All your material activities, my dear friends, good or bad, will one day come to an end. Take note of that and keep that in mind so that when you have the possibility, benefit from the blessings of Allah to help you here and send something that will be of benefit for you there. And that is the message and mission of life, you know. Some people spend all their time amassing wealth only to die and leave it for their inheritors to abuse or use in ways which may not necessarily be conducive for a healthy moral lifestyle. If material strength is very important, Allah gives out a challenge to those who possess it. He says, then why, listen, if you feel you are really strong, and you are this and you are that. Allah says, when the soul is leaving the dying person, if you think you are wise and strong, send down the, back, the, the soul back inside. In other words, can you prolong life? Your lifespan is fixed. The mission is, use it wisely. Because you will not be given another life in this world. Islam teaches that while a person has to strive to get his portion of this material world, he must use it to get a lofty 
place in the hereafter. Because one day it will no longer be existing here. But if you send it before, you will get it there. And that is one of the blessings Allah has given human beings, which He did not give other creatures. The internal conflict. The internal conflict. That is something we need to know about. In every human being, there is an internal conflict inside him or her. That is, between the nafs and the ruh. The material, the working of the material body. What does my material body want? Eat, drink and be merry. Whether you marry or not. That is what the material body wants. Right? As Allah says, Inna nafsa la ammaratun bisu. The nafs does not care about morality and about anything like that. It wants pleasure for the sake of pleasure. That is the nafs. The material desires satisfy the material desires. Whether you short circuit the, 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 the principle of morality or whatever you do, that is no, that is no business of the nafs. Just provide the, the, the desires of the nafs. And that is the concern of the material dimension of every human personality. We call it the animal self or the baser self. Whatever what self you want to call it. It is a self. Important. But you need to take note of another thing. The rule, on the other hand, wants to get close to Allah. Because it is extremely refined life. And it will feel comfortable. Just as how you will be, feel comfortable if you have a good cultured neighbor next to you. But if you have somebody who has some queer habits and manners and so on, it will make you uneasy. So too, the rule wants to get close to Allah. Right? It wants to be polished and bright so that it can be a true mirror to reflect the light of Allah on earth. If the rule is polished, shining and bright, it can reflect something of the light of Allah on earth. وَأَشْرَكَتِ الْأَرْضِ nuri رَبِّهَا And the earth will be filled with the light of the Lord. In order for this to happen, the person has to enjoy good and stay away from evil. A simple formula, you know. Enjoy good that has been defined by religion. Because good is a term in moral philosophy. Who is to decide what is good? The mafia will say to kill that fellow and bring the, the assets here is a good thing. Right? Who is to decide what is good? Religion defines good in a particular way. And that is what we understand. Alright? So the mission in life is to enjoy good and stay away from evil. The individual with a materialistic outlook of life will only engage his time with material pursuits. Some strive to acquire plenty of this world, even through devious means. It doesn't matter. So long as I get more. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is reported to have said, you know, if God should give the progeny of Adam one mountain of gold, he will pray for another. You know that. All right. Those from among them who recognize God pray as follows. So you have among human beings they recognize there is a God. They recognize they were sent here. But what do they pray for? Rabbana atina fit dunya. That's all. Oh God, give us plenty of this world. More and more and more. And in their doors and in everything, they want more of the material world. And they are not concerned about the hereafter. Such people are very selfish. They do not help others. They do not realize that this material life is just for a short time but the hereafter is eternal. Such people's hearts becomes hard and restricted. Their souls are encased in layers of black coating and they will be confined to the flames of hell. In hell, the soul will not burn you. The soul is extremely refined light. More intense than the fire of hell. The soul will not burn. What will burn? The coatings that you put over the soul, the stains that you put, that is what will burn. That is why Allah says, the fire over the heart. As opposed to the materialists, Islam teaches 
that one should benefit from the material provisions of this world and at the same time work towards achieving success in the next. Use your material assets to give you eternal peace and tranquility. That is your mission of life. So they pray, our Lord, give us good in this world, Rabbana, not enough in dunya, Hasana, fulfill akhirati Hasana. So they pray for good in this world and good in the next world and save us from the torment of fire. And even if we should make a mistake and put a little stain on our, on, 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 on our beautiful, bright, shining room, save us. Don't allow the fire to burn us. Such people strike a healthy balance by utilizing their material blessings to benefit themselves and others, and also by sending some for use in the next life by giving charity and doing good. The journey, brothers and sisters, we all are on a journey. We are on a material journey, one thing, but we are on a journey back to our Lord. Ilaihi Raji Poon. We say that all the time. To our Lord is our returning. We are returning, but some people may never reach. Some people may never reach. And that is the lesson that religion gives us to know. How do you, journey, you take, undertake your journey that you can reach your destination? Your destination is your Lord. Allah says in the Quran, Ila Rabbika Muntaha. Your Lord is your destination. So walk towards getting there. And as I said in this, uh, the pre-servant um, talk today, it is difficult to climb. We have to go up back because our eyes over there, although he's close to us, he's, he, move, he moves in our chest, he's nearer to us than our jugular vein, but his station, his, his place is quite up, and you have to climb up. It is very difficult to climb. But it is very easy to fall. Take note of that. Take note of that. It's very difficult to climb. But it is very easy to fall. Beware. A person has to always keep in mind that he or she is on a journey. Allah sent us here and we are returning to Him. The day, time and place of our exit from this material world has been fixed. Allah has given us a lifespan and he says when that moment comes, no adjustment, no alteration. You know what I told? Well, one Jamaat with a lot of wealthy people, when the angel will come to you, you will not even have time to sign a check. And the man said, is that so? I never realized that. So you can't say, wait, wait, wait. I want to give so much in charity to Darul Alkam or this place or that. No, 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 no. Do it before that moment. Because when Al Yaqeen, the, the, the reality of the situation comes to you, there is no altar, there is no change, there is no begging or pleading. Nothing will help. So we are on our journey. And Allah says, if you want to reach there, whoever is desirous of meeting his Lord, let him work righteousness. And let him not ascribe a partner with God. And that is important. Muslims are a fortunate people. Brothers and sisters, we are very fortunate. We are blessed. We are special. As Allah said, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. As a role model for us, as a role model, to teach the believers practically and theoretically how to go along this straight path. We guide us, you know, guide us on this straight path. What is the straight path? 